Right, Super Rugby Saturday and Sunday games, weekend games essentially. Chainsaw Guy looks to be done. Maybe. If you saw the Friday video, you'll know that there's been a chap chopping down all kinds of stuff down my driveway. So, um, yeah. See if he's done. Uh, otherwise, we'll go through some lineups and stats and predictions, and you guys can leave me any thoughts on how the games might go this weekend. Uh, the Blues have finally named their lineup to face Moana Pacifica. This week, they're without a few All Blacks. There's a few guys like Satutu and Yuane, Rico, and uh, Bodhi, who had a head knock anyway, um, who are on, I think, All Blacks rest period, according to the Blues Twitter anyway. So, yeah, the, the Blues are without some of their big guns, but it's it's a stronger look inside, I think, for the most part, than the one that played on Tuesday. Remember, these guys played each other on Tuesday uh, at Mount Smart in a makeup game for one of the earlier cancelled ones. This one... Uh, is a regular fixture, so short turnaround. Some guys on both sides will be essentially going back to back. Um, but they've brought in Zan Sullivan at fullback. His boot has been really useful uh, for the Blues thus far this season, so he's a fine addition. Likewise, Caleb Clark has been in barnstorming form. AJ Lamb switches wings. Bryce Heems into the midfield. Uh, Eklund replaces Riccatelli. Marcel Renata's in there. Remember, um, we got a red card for um, Laulala. So, um, yeah, that's an uh, opportunity for Marcel Renata to get a, get a crack. Uh, Tucker is in the second row alongside Tom Robinson. Uh, Luke Romano is on the bench. So he played last week or last week on Tuesday. So, yeah, Anton Signer still playing. Dalton Papali is still playing. Cameron Suafoa, I think he played his first game on Tuesday for the Blues. He gets his second. So he's starting this time on blindside. So, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a mixed Blues lineup. But to be expected, given that they have to play two games in a week and um yeah some of these guys a lot of these guys didn't play on tuesday so they should be pretty fresh now looking at the blue stats wise there's some pleasing stuff they get more clean breaks than any other team fun team to watch at uh, at getting that space they're averaging over six a game the average is just over four so the blues are pretty dangerous but frustratingly pretty much every game within the last 10 minutes the Blues are still either, they're ahead by more than a score and then they concede points or the game somehow ends up close. The Blues need to put put Moana Pacifica to bed for my blood pressure, please. But that being said, Moana Pacifica have been pretty good. They've made some changes of their own. Lilia Fano is back at 10. Uh, Stowers is back at 8. Funaki and Tuipulotu into the, the back row as well. Lindenmuth, Moli and Kepu is the front row. William Havili is uh, in at full back. So yeah, wholesale changes. For, for Moana Pacific as well. I mean, Solomon Akata is still there in the midfield. Inari is still there at nine. So it's not the whole team, but it's much of the team, uh, which has been kind of shifted up, which does make sense. Like, man, these guys played on Tuesday. So it was always going to be the case, I think, that both sides had to uh, had to kind of manage the players as best they could. McClatch is on the bench. Paul Taval is on the bench. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a mixed lineup with only a handful of guys on each side who've kind of played week in, week out. Guys like Michael Curry from Moana Pacifica, Peter Feta for the Blues, um, and so on. So, yeah, I mean, one thing when I look at the stats from Moana Pacifica, they just don't have enough ball, man. 42.5% is their average possession stat for the season, and that's the lowest of any team in the competition including the Aussie team. So they just need some more ball, eh? Like their other stats look fine, but they would look better if they had more ball. Like you'd get more defenders beaten and more clean breaks and more points if you had more ball. I mean, you don't have to play with ball in hand. The Highlanders famously won Super Rugby by essentially playing kick and tackle uh, and then counter-attack. But yeah, ideally you want some more ball. Um, but yeah, they're away at Eden Park, so it's going to be a tough game. Uh, it was 32-19 at Mount Smart with largely different teams. Uh, this week for Saturday, the Blues are the favourites by 22 with the bookies and by 34 with the algorithm. So the Blues will certainly not want to allow things to get as close as they did last week. But if Moana Pacifica has shown us anything in the last two weeks, it's they're perhaps a wee bit better than a lot of people expected, maybe including myself. Uh, the next game is a uh, rematch between the big clash of the two Aussie teams. Uh, the Reds have only dropped one game, and guess what? That was to the Brumbies. Well, that was in Canberra. This one, we're in Brisbane. The Brumbies are the only undefeated side in the competition, but now they've got to go and get it done away from home in Brisbane, so it should be a pretty interesting watch. Uh, the Reds have made a handful of changes. Fluke swaps wings. Dalgunu's in on the left. Uh, Hooper's in uh, at loose head prop up from the bench. Liam Wright gets a start at six up from the bench. 
Uh, you still got Tate McDermott, who was good last week on his first week back from injury. James O'Connor still there at 10. So for the most part, like Pasamia Stewart, same midfield. Pattaya still there at fullback. For the most part, it's that same red side, uh, which got a good win over the Tars last week. Salakai Alotto is back on the bench as well, which is also a bit of good news. Now, interestingly, when you look at the Reds, a lot of their stats aren't that flash, but there's one really important one, which is they're just not conceding many tries. They've only conceded nine the whole competition. The next best teams are the Brumbies, who've conceded 13, and uh, the Crusaders, who've also conceded 13. But remember, the Crusaders have played only one... Uh, they've played one game less than the, uh, the Reds. So the Reds are pretty stingy on defense, eh? But, um, yeah... If, uh, if the Brumbies can, can score a few, then, um, then obviously they should be able to get ahead, but it's just that matter of whether they can or not. For the Brumbies, they've come back from Western Australia with that one point win over the force and made a few changes. Slippers back, Fainga is back, Alatoa is back, so that's good news. Rob Valtina thinks getting his 50th cap for the Brumbies, so congratulations to him. Um, I mean, that, that back row of Valtini, Brown, and Samu is pretty tidy, eh? Uh, Valtini gets through some big carries. Brown's got a good work rate, and Samu's got some pretty silky skills. Uh, Jesse Moggs in at fullback. Obviously, Tom Banks fractured his face uh, with that high tackle last week, which was actually then, uh, by the judiciary, whittled down to a yellow. So he's not suspended, but he does have a fractured face. So not going to be playing. Um, Simone and Ikitao in the midfield. Interesting, Cam Clark is in on the bench. So I don't think, we'll, I don't think we've seen much of him in a... Uh, in the Brumpy's jersey since he's come back from the States. But um, yeah, interestingly, like I always go on about the malls. The Brumby is uh, still, I say this week out, week in, week out, the team that likes to maul it more than anybody else in Super Rugby this season. But they also get more clean breaks than any of the Aussie teams. They're not up with the Blues yet. They're not up with the Canes, who also get a lot. But 5.2 clean breaks per game for the Aussies, of the Brumbies is right up there in the highest of the Aussie teams. That being said, the Reds are favourites. They're at home and they are favourites. Three points with the bookies, two points with the algorithm. You guys have to let me know if you think the Brumbies are going to suffer their first defeat or they can sneak one through. And the last one is the Sunday game, Canes against the Chiefs. Both sides will be pretty disappointed with their last game. Canes lost. They were the first ever side to lose to Moana Pacifica and uh, the Chiefs couldn't back up against the, the Crusaders. Um... They beat them away, but then lost pretty handily at home, eh? So the Chiefs will be particularly gutted by that performance, to be honest. Um, like, they weren't even in the game by the end of it, you know what I mean? The Crusaders, a um, bit too easy for them. But, um, yeah, the Canes, they've made a handful of changes. I think that last game, they had some pretty big disruptions, although every team, at least in New Zealand, uh, with the COVID stuff, has been pretty disruptive. You've got Savia back starting. He's captain at eight. Karufi is back. Uh, Garden Bashup gets the reins at 10 this week because they've shifted Lou, uh, Ruben Love uh, to fullback. Geordie Barrett's moved them from fullback to 12. He talked a long time ago about wanting to play 12, but he's never really been given much of a crack. So that'll be interesting to see how he goes. Julian Savia's on the right wing. Uh, Billy Proctor's at center. So yeah, Rocky to Stone's loose head. It's, um, yeah, it's a lot of changes for the, uh, for the Canes. Interestingly, the Canes got the best line out now in Super Rugby. They've passed the, the Crusaders. They're at 89%. So that's always a good thing in terms of being a platform for setting up some attacking play. We'll see if they can maintain that against the Chiefs. Remember, the Chiefs are without Brody Retallick, so he won't be competing at line-out time. He's injured. Um, but they've also made some few changes, and they've got some big names back. Peter Gusso Akula has been one of the outstanding players of the Chiefs season thus far. They look a worse team when he's not playing. He's back at number eight. ALB's back in the midfield, which means Nankerville, who's been really impressive, has to shift out to the right wing. Narawa's in at fullback. Um, Ta'avau gets a start instead of being on the bench. Va'i switches to the second row instead of the back row. Akoy is starting alongside him. Caleb Boshi is starting at six. Sam Kane still at seven. There's a lot of tackling in that uh, Chiefs back row, to be honest. And um, yeah, they've got Atumoli there. Chase Tieti on the bench. Bryn Gatlin drops to the bench because they're given... Josh Iwane a crack this week, so yeah, a little bit of um, a change of plans maybe after a bit of a disappointing one, but like I said, also just having guys back available will certainly help. Um, if there's a team you want to watch, just, I mean, like I said, the Blues get heaps of clean breaks, but if you want a team who's really going to chuck it around, 
The Chiefs chucked the ball around more than anybody else by a mile. They averaged 20 more passes than everyone else a game. They got more offloads than everybody else. The Chiefs just love moving the ball. They like to stretch teams uh, by moving the ball through the hands. So that's often a pretty fun thing to watch. The Chiefs are favorites. Six points with the bookies. One point with the algorithm. Would you look at that? No chance or the whole video. Happy, happy days. Um, but yeah. Uh, remember, there's one game fewer this week because uh, the, ch the Force and the Rebels are on a bye. So, um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the games this weekend. Who are you picking to get wins? Do you think it is going to be Blues, Reds, and Chiefs like the bookies and the algorithm have got? Or can you see an upset anywhere? Um, I'm hoping that game should be comfortable for my Blues, but the other two look like they could be proper arm miracles. But anyway... Uh, I don't want to write off Moana Pacifica either because just look at the game on Tuesday. It was way closer than most people expected. Anyway, going to go. Take care of yourselves, folks. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.